Welcome back, everyone. I do see it is 11.50 a.m., so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, so welcome back from lunch. Uh, I'm Derek Ramsey. I will be moderating this session. Uh, this session is a showcase of new and upcoming features, and it will be presented by Wilma Hodges. Um, as always, if you have any questions during the session, please enter them in the QA area or the chat area, um, and I will... Um, work those into the presentation and get those answered by Wilma uh, as we go through. Also, as the other sessions, this one is recorded. It'll be available at a later date on the Sakai YouTube channel. If anyone has any problems with audio or video, uh, please use the uh, chat box and let me know, and I'll work with you on getting that set up and working. Wilma? All right, great. Well, welcome back, everybody. Hopefully you had a nice little break there um, midday. And um, we're going to kick off the new and upcoming features section um, now, or what I like to call the Sakai feature parade. So I'm going to parade through a whole bunch of slides to show you some of the new features in this release, Sakai 22, which is our current release, and also preview a few of the things that we have in the pipeline for Sakai 23 or later. So. Um, we're gonna move pretty fast through these slides, um, but I will pause for questions as we go. So if you do have a question, please um, make sure to enter those in as you think of them, and I'll try to address them as, as we go. All right, so we'll start off first with Sakai 22, which again is our current release. Um, and uh, in the assignment tool, we have a new work log feature in assignments. We also have a video submission assignment type and some improvements with the LTI assignment type. The LTI assignment type was actually new in, um, I think, 21, uh, but it was improved. And um, I'll, I'll show you a little bit about each of those here in the, the upcoming slide. So this one is showing the work log feature. So if you look here, this is part of the settings area in an assignment. Um, if you have this feature turned on, it allows you to estimate the completed time or the time to complete the assignment. So you can give students an idea of how long they should plan to spend. Um, you can choose to make it mandatory if you want. And um, students will actually be able to log. Um, it's self-reported, but they'll be able to log the time that they spent so that then you have a better idea how long students are actually spending completing the work. Um, the next uh, new thing in assignments is the video assignment. And you may have seen this a little bit or heard about it from Dave Evelyn's presentation yesterday. Um, the video assignment lets you um, choose from the submission type dropdown. And there's a new selection there for video. And what it does is um, this is showing kind of the student view. It gives them a recording option right within the browser. So they don't need necessarily like a third party tool like warp wire or some other tool. They don't have to record it ahead of time and attach a file. Um, they can record it right in the browser and, um, and submit it that way. And then as the instructor, when you go into grade, it shows up right here in the grading area of the assignment area where you would preview a file. That's where the video shows up. So you can quickly play them and score them. You can attach a rubric, all that good stuff. So that's a very cool new addition to the um, assignments types. The other one that I mentioned was the improvements to LTI. So if you've not um, tried out the LTI assignment type, it's also in the drop down menu there for the submission type. And when you choose external tool now, it's going to um, hide some of the features that don't work with the external tool. So there's um, things like group submission and, and things like that that don't work with the external tool because you're linking to a third party um, type of tool. But it will, this is what, the, what it looks like when you choose that. You can select any tools that are installed. And in this case, I chose from the Sugi set and I'm using Sticky Grader as my example because um, that was a good one to test with. So when you choose the, the app, um, it'll ask you to give it a description and a title. Um, now, this is going to vary depending on what app you choose. This is just specific to Sticky Grader, but if you had some other LTI tool, you would be configuring whatever tool you, it was you selected. 
Um, and then once you drop it in, it's going to ask you if you want to change the assignment title to whatever you named that LTI item, um, in this case, sticky grader. So I said, OK, I'll do that. Um, and then down here at the bottom, um, you will probably want to allow resubmissions. And the reason for that is because all the grading is handled in the LTI tool, that's where a lot of the feedback lives. Um, so students need a way to get back into the LTI tool to see the feedback if it's something where you're providing feedback within the tool. Um, so giving them unlimited submissions just lets them get back in there to see that whatever it was that they submitted and see your feedback in that third party tool. Um, so that's optional. It really depends on the tool, whether or not you're going to send them back to it to see anything there. Um, but if it is something like sticky grader where I'm actually commenting on the document itself, then I wanted that selected so that people could get in there and see those comments. Um, and I am grading it, so it is going to send it to the grade books. I, I checked those options there. And um, the cool thing about it, now I've gone in uh, as, a, as a student and submitted um, as this demo student. So as an instructor, when I go in to grade, I can see in the grading list of submissions for students, I can see that there's an ungraded LTI submission there waiting for me, um, which is pretty cool because this used to not show up. It was just sort of, you didn't know if there was a submission there or not. Now it shows you that there's a submission. It shows you the status, shows you when it was submitted. Um, and then if you click on the, the student to pull up that submission, it will actually preview it for you in the Sakai grader. So this is showing me my um, sticky grader submission right within the grader. And you'll see a little note there letting you know that this um, the submissions are managed in that external tool, just so you're aware of where it's coming from. Um, but it goes direct to the student. So um, if I hit next, it's going to take me to the next student submission. Um, and so and this is, again, in sticky grader. I navigated over here to, um, to enter a score. But once I enter the score in the third party tool, um, I get a little message saying that it was submitted to the server. And then when I go back here and release the grades, you can see the grade here. Um, I can see that it's released. And if I go to the grade book in this course, it will automatically be in there in the grade book. So it's a really nice, tight integration with LTI. So um, I, I wanted to walk through that because I know a lot of people haven't played with it yet, um, but it's, it's a very slick integration. You should definitely test it out. And it's going to vary a little bit depending on the, the tool that you use, but the sticky grader is a great one to test with. Um, all right, so moving on. So uh, Calendar also got some love. Um, there's a new UI framework that, that is running sort of the back end of Calendar, and this will make it a lot easier to add new Calendar features going forward. Um, things like multi-day events and other types of, of, of bells and whistles that were difficult to do in the old calendar framework. So now it opens the door for a lot of that cool stuff. Um, so uh, you'll see that the navigation in the new calendar is a little different up here in the way that you navigate back and forward and through the month, weekday. Um, it looks a little different. Other than that, it doesn't look dramatically different yet. Um, but again, uh, get those feature requests into JIRA because it's going to be a lot easier to add those types of things now with a more modern um, framework for the calendar. Um, all right. So the CK editor, which is our rich editor, sorry, my dogs are barking at something. Um, the rich text editor is, um, is now has a collapsed option for a more clean look, a little more modern look, and it is easier on mobile devices because you don't have the full toolbar every time. Um, so this is what it looks like. This is a CK editor that shows up throughout Sakai and all sorts of different tools. So it's going to show up in you know, discussions and conversations and lessons all over the place in Sakai, basically anywhere you edit uh, rich text. And um, you'll see this little expand collapse triangle. If you expand it out, then you get the full toolbar. So those options are still there. You can still customize uh, what tools appear there for your particular instance. Um, but by default, it's got that collapsed view, which is a little cleaner. 
So the commons tool, I don't know if you guys have used commons at all. It's a nifty little social um, communication tool, kind of Facebook style um, messaging. It's got a new like feature for posts and comments. So, um, so if you post something, there's a little like button and you can you know, hit the thumbs up and it'll say how many people liked your post. Um, so that's a, a small addition, but uh, it makes it a little more um, feel like, like a modern social media type of thing. So conversations, that's a brand new tool. There's so many new features. I'm not gonna spend a ton of time covering. I know you had a, a session yesterday on conversations. There's a, an instance of conversations in this site you can go play with. So I won't be able to cover all of the features, but some of the key ones are that it's anonymous Q&A, you can have reactions, you can have pinning, you can have tagging, there's community guidelines. There's a whole bunch more that, like I said, uh, I encourage you to go and play with it, explore for yourself. Um, but it was designed from the ground up um, for, to be a new modern um, tool. And we're very excited um, to roll it out with Sakai 22. Um, one thing that you'll notice, and these are just some screenshots. So you've got your settings. You can turn these on or off, depending if you want them enabled for your course. So things like upvoting, bookmarking, um, community guidelines, all those are options. You can turn on or off as the instructor. Um, so this is what the community guidelines looks like. If you do enable it, when people go in for the first time, they have to agree to it before they can actually get in and participate, which is um, it's kind of a nice feature if you wanna make sure that people acknowledge it. Um, the instructor of the course, the instructor's uh, posts are highlighted. You'll see this is it's highlighted in kind of a green um, backdrop to differentiate it from the other posts in there. So, um, so that when you're answering a question, you can kind of quickly scan and, and visually locate the instructor's answer a little bit easier. Um, and uh, there, these are some of the reactions that are available here. You can also mark things as a good answer or a good question. And um, as I mentioned, you can have anonymous posts. Um, you can also pin things to the top. Um, and it'll show you over here if things are answered or unanswered by uh, the status of that question mark. Um, you'll also notice uh, this was kind of a late addition to conversations, but we managed to get it in to the 22.1 release, I believe, is the addition of the discussion post type. So it started off with just the, um, the question part, but uh, for the anonymous Q&A, but the discussions um, post type has also been added. So that's available too. And, um, and you'll see that you can differentiate here between discussions and questions based on the icons associated with it. Um, discussions also allow for a little bit deeper um, threading of posts. So lessons, and we saw a great uh, demonstration of lessons earlier today. Um, so you may have already seen the new page layouts in that particular presentation, but just in case you missed it, um, there is a new layout feature. And it's if you pull up add layout, you get your choice of different ones. So you can preview them. This is a sub page, um, the interior layout with um, a resource section, and then an interior layout with task sections. So any of those you can add to a page and it'll automatically drop in that template. And then you can manage or you know, modify the sections with your particular content. But it makes it a lot easier to create attractive um, pages without a lot of work. So that's a very cool addition to, um, to the lessons tool. All right, so in profile, we have personal pronouns now in profile. Um, so I know a lot of folks like to indicate their own personal pronouns in a variety of applications. Well, you can do that now in your, in your, in your site. Um, there's also been an addition of Instagram to the social info in the profile tool. So let me show you what that looks like. Um, this is an example of the, uh, the personal pronouns. It shows up under the name pronunciation area in, um, in Sakai. So uh, you'll see that there's a drop down menu there. You can choose from one of the provided ones or you can enter your own. Um, and once you make a selection here, 
if you have the roster tool in a course, it's going to show up in the roster. So you'll see that it, it shows the pronouns there. Um, so that's where it surfaces it. And anywhere else in Sakai where the individual's profile is linked, where it shows that um, basic profile information, you can choose to make those pronouns visible. Um, it's one of the privacy settings, I believe, but, um, but you can enable those so that they show up in different places. And um, also in the profile, um, as the instructor, well, actually any user, you can go into your profile up here um, in the top right and uh, link directly to your profile. And under the social networking, that's where the Instagram URL shows up. So if you have an Instagram, you want to make available to people as part of your profile, you can go ahead and put that URL in there so that it shows up anywhere that the profile appears. All right, so rubrics. Um, I did a session yesterday on rubrics. Uh, so you probably saw some of these already as part of that session, but um, we'll just recap them again uh, in case you forgot or in case you missed it. So there is a new criterion group option in the rubric tool when you create a rubric. Um, you also have the ability to export rubrics as PDF. So you can print those off or save them as a PDF file. And there's a negative penalty point option now for criteria. So um, if you wanted to be a little more strict with your uh, rubrics and have penalties for not doing something, it gives you the option to put those negative points in. Um, so first, we'll just see a quick image of the criterion group. So this is when you're creating or editing a rubric. You can add a criterion group. And it just puts kind of a visual divider in there so that you can group sections of your rubric underneath it. Um, so it doesn't have any points associated with it. I know people were doing kind of a hack in, in, in the past where they would put sort of a, a item that didn't have any points so that they could have that sort of break in the rubric to organize it. Um, so now you have it without having to, to do the workaround. Um, so this, you can have as many different criterion groups as you like um, to break up your, your uh, rubric sections. And here's just an example. I, I had one I called objectives and I put a couple of objectives underneath it. All right, so the printing, this is showing me um, a rubric that is uh, in a student submission. So if you have a, a graded submission, that you're looking at for a particular student, you can um, click on the PDF icon up at the top. And what it does, it actually exports the graded submission for that, for that person. Sorry again about the dogs. They're not behaving very well today. Um, okay, so you can also um, print a rubric from the rubric manager. So if you go here, you'll see the PDF icon and you can print a blank version of the rubric without you know, any student grades or student information attached to it. So this is again, another way to, to easily share those or print them off for your own um, records. All right, and this is the negative point value. So any criterion where you have points, you can just put a minus sign in the front of it and it will take it. Um, so that's kind of um, a nice feature. It makes it a little more like some of the other tools in the guy where you have the ability to enter a negative score. Yeah, Josh says my dogs are excited about rubrics too. Um, yeah, they love rubrics. <laughs> Okay, so that's all the Sakai 22 stuff. Now I'm going to show you a little bit about what's coming in Sakai 23. So we do have um, a few things in the works, and um, one of them is an improved UI. There's been a lot of work on uh, the user interface and sort of modernizing the portal. Um, so there's going to be some improvements there in the, the interface for the portal. And then we're also, as part of that redo, surfacing some of the profile um, functionality and, and the task uh, widget that has um, been added to the new dashboard tool. Um, so those were surfacing a little more easily so that people can kind of use them um, throughout the um, system a little more um, 
easy access to get to them. So these are mock-ups. So this is not live. These are some mock-ups. So there may be more current ones. These are the ones I was able to locate. Um, but here's a mock-up of the dashboard. So we've kind of changed up the, the left nav a little bit. Um, and uh, you can perform some actions on a course from these, these uh, little dots here. It, it flags you when there's new items. Um, and, uh, and this section over here is actually collapsible. So you can collapse that by clicking on the little hamburger menu. If you prefer a kind of a cleaner look to your interface, um, another thing you can do, this is showing kind of visualization of what the assignment table might look like. So we've made a few UI changes here as well to kind of clean it up and modernize it. Um, and you can actually um, expand out the profile from the right side. It kind of floats out from the side to get to your profile and also to get to things like your tasks if you have any to-dos or reminders or upcoming tasks that you wanna be able to access from anywhere. So it doesn't matter which course you're in, you can get to it really easily. So those are some of the things that have been, have been kicked around for the UI. Um, so we're still, um, it's still in progress. So I'm not sure exactly how many of these are gonna make it into 23, um, but they're definitely in the works. There's also quite a bit of work um, still to be done for conversations. So the tools that exist right now um, is pretty awesome, but there are some additional improvements planned, such as uh, improved profile integration. So remember I showed you some of those things like the personal pronouns and stuff in the profile. Well, those are gonna be shown a, a little more readily in the tool as well. Um, there's a full functional search within the tool. So if you want to look for posts from a particular user or with a particular keyword, it's going to make that an easy thing to do. Um, the full set of emojis is going to be added. Um, we're also going to have at mentions. I'm not sure what happened to my bullet there. It dropped off somehow. Um, but we have at mentions that send no notifications via email. And we are also working on grading, the ability to easily integrate the grading um, tool, the grader with the rubrics and all of that into conversations. That's a bigger beast because it deals with grades. So I'm not 100% sure when that will happen, but it's definitely something that we're working toward. Um, unfortunately, I don't have screenshots of all of these or even mock-ups of all of these. I do have a couple that I can share. So this one shows the profile. So um, you'll see that it's showing a little bit more of the profile than what you currently get um, in conversations. And um, this one shows the full emoji set. So when you go to add a reaction to a post, you get the, the full set of emojis that people are more accustomed to in, in a variety of tools. So it's not quite as limited as the initial set that we rolled out. So those are just two small things that I was able to get um, some mock-ups of. Um, but as I said, we're, we're working on a whole bunch of things. Um, and if you have ideas for improvements, please you know, tell us in the, the conversations in this site, in the conference site, there is a thread for suggestions. So please feel free to make suggestions there. Um, you can also open a JIRA if you would like to um, open a ticket in our, in our issue feature request system and um, describe, you know, the improvement that you propose and, you know, get that documented so that when we do go looking for, for more stuff to add, um, it's all there and ready to be worked on. We had a quick we, question, Wilma. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, you go ahead. We, yeah, we can wrap back to it no. if you want. Okay, it's, a, it's an assignment question for <laughs> Kai 22, okay. a video okay. submit, assignment video submission. Can a group assignment mm -hmm. be submitted by all students present in the group, like do a single video together or by a single student individually? I believe that, you know, with the group options, you could do either or, right? Yeah. yeah. So you could have it, so you could have it, uh, the entire group can submit. So one submission based on the whole group or each person individually in the group. Does that sound right, Wilma? Yeah, if you set it up as a group assignment, one person from the group can submit. So if they all want to be in the video, they can either kind of like meet up in person and, you know, all be in front of the camera at the same time, but they can submit one video for the group. Okay. That's it for the questions. Thank you. Okay. 
Um, all right, so meetings. Meetings is a brand new tool. Um, there is currently a contrib tool called meetings, which is essentially the integration with Big Blue Button. And um, that was actually a little bit of our inspiration for the meetings rework, uh, that as well as uh, the experience of kind of, you know, so much going online as a result of the pandemic and, and virtual meetings being kind of, you know, super critical to any course, whether it was a intended as a campus course or not. Um, so making that easier to manage, making it easier for people to have multiple tools, maybe they have Zoom and MS Teams that they're on their campus and you know you want to be able to manage and schedule from one location. Um, so that's kind of the, the idea behind meetings. Um, so it will facilitate scheduling, joining, viewing recordings, all of that within Sakai and kind of a consistent UI for scheduling that that takes advantage of things in Sakai, like the groups and the roles in your site. Um, and uh, currently it supports the Microsoft Teams integration um, out of the box. And we are working on some additional ones. So the next one to be developed will likely be Zoom since so many people use Zoom, even though Zoom already has an LTI integration and that's why we went with MS Teams first. Um, but uh, you know, if you want to use meetings instead because it gives you a little bit more functionality, kind of a deeper integration with your Sakai course, um, that's coming. Um, we're also gonna be working on the big blue button option and um, any other tools that people request down the road, we hope to be able to support a number of different virtual meeting tools. Um, so the meetings tool is available now um, as a contrib tool. So um, EDF worked on a lot of the implementation for the designs that we kind of um, set up and uh, it is available and out there right now if people want to use it in an earlier version. So you can install it, I think, in, in versions 20 and up as a contrib tool. Um, it is going to be part of 23 as a core tool, but we wanted to make it available for folks who maybe weren't going to be upgrading for a while. And you know, 23 isn't out yet. Um, and we wanted people to get in there and be able to test it, use it, give us feedback for things that they might want to see added or changed. Um, so this just kind of shows the landing page for meetings with a few different um, things scheduled. So these are happening today. So anything current kind of floats to the top. Any past meetings show up down here. And if it's something with a recording, um, the recordings are, are able to be accessed right from this page. So you don't have to navigate to multiple tabs to get to those kinds of things. Um, the other thing that we wanted to kind of replicate a little bit electronically is the experience of um, peeking into a classroom to see who else is in there, or maybe looking at a table at a conference and seeing if you want to join your friend over there at, at the birds of the feather. So um, we have these thumbnails of the folks that are in the session when it's happening, and you can kind of you know hover over those to see more if there's more than can be shown here. Um, there's also a join meeting link that shows up here. And um, it, we don't have a picture of it, I don't think, but we also have plans to make a, um, a widget for meetings that could be dropped anywhere. So you might have this meeting widget that shows up in the dashboard or on overview, or maybe even on a lessons page. Um, you could drop in those meetings and have that card show up in lots of different places throughout Sakai. So you don't always have to go to the meetings tool to get there. Um, so that's something that's that's we're working on. It's not in the current implementation, but it's definitely in the roadmap for meetings. Um, this just shows a little bit about the setup screen, and you'll see that here you have the option to choose a web conferencing service. So right now your only choice is Microsoft Teams, but later on, once we have a number to choose from, if your institution has set up more than one service, so your, your admin would have to set up the uh, credentials for your Microsoft Teams or for your Zoom or whatever other accounts you might have. And once those are set up at the admin level, then the individual instructors would be able to choose from a drop down menu which one they want to do. So you could have maybe like your Zoom meeting and maybe a backup meeting in, in a, a different service if you have more than one. Um, so anyway, that's kind of the, the idea behind that. 
Um, and we also uh, had a little more with um, breakout rooms. If you want to set up breakout rooms and see who's in uh, different uh, rooms or, or tables, we call them, um, you can do that when you actually schedule the meeting. And this is the mobile view. We wanted it to work great on mobile because we know that people meet virtually from wherever they are and they might not be at their computer. They might be in a coffee shop or in the car, hopefully not driving. Um, so uh, we wanted it to be something that they could really easily navigate uh, from a mobile device. So this is just a screenshot of the mobile view. Great. And then we had a couple rubrics. questions, a couple quick yeah, questions, I think, for, for meetings. Right. Um, okay. One, will the means tool be uh, surfaced in lessons? We hope so, yes. It's not currently, but that's the plan, is to have a web component that mm -hmm. allows you to drop it into lessons. Okay, one more question. Um, how will people differentiate between uh, the big blue button tool from, from the core? Um, you might want to rename it locally. If you're using big blue button locally, um, maybe you could call meetings, big blue button meetings or something, because um, you can rename things with the message bundle manager to something else. Um, so I would suggest renaming either your existing uh, integration or, or the new one, depending on which one you're phasing in or out. Thank you. All right, any other questions on that? Nope, for meetings, that's it. No? Right. Thank you. Um, so rubrics also got uh, some new stuff in um, in 23, and it's actually it's in experimental now. If you go to nightly, um, if you want to check it out, because uh, that's where I get these screenshots. Um, but I'm very excited about this. This was a contribution from University of Dayton. They, they contribute so much great stuff. So thank you, Dayton. Um, and uh, it, again, if you went to my rubric session, you probably saw this already. But what it does is once you have some graded submissions, um, you do have to have a few grades in there first before the report's available, you get these additional tabs. So this tab you're probably used to seeing when you view a rubric. But this student summary tab and criteria summary tab are new. Um, and so if you go to the student summary, it breaks it down by student and it'll show you their scores for each criterion, and then you get a, an average for the class. Um, or if you want to view it by criteria, you can have, and it, it groups them for you. It'll, uh, the, all these sections expand, so it'll group by um, criterion. And then if you want to expand all, you can expand out the whole thing and see um, sort of a, a standard deviation of how people scored on a particular item in the rubric. Um, so these are, are some awesome additions to the rubric uh, feature set so that you have these types of reports available to you. And um, hopefully we can expand on it in future versions and make it um, even more feature rich by making it kind of a cross course reporting. Right now it's only within a particular site, a particular rubric. So it's kind of tied to that specific instance of that rubric with that assignment. Um, but hopefully, um, as I said, from you know, in the future, not for 23, uh, but uh, maybe a later version, we can build on that and, and make it a little more um, comprehensive. Great. So that is it for my feature parade. Um, hopefully, uh, you got um, some new tidbits that you didn't already know. And um, I think we still have a little bit of time for questions. Uh, Christina asked a question. I missed exactly which feature she was looking at. So um, it was just there on the rubric. She goes, any chance of that feature being backported into 22? And Christi the rubric summary. Rubric summary. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure. Do we have any developers on here that could answer that? It's always possible to backport, but it takes work. Okay. Adrian, um, Adrian, so, thanks, thanks, Adrian. He did mention that it's possible. Okay, great. Thanks, Adrian. Any other questions? Christina says she wants it. <laughs> how will the, uh, from, from Dave England, how will the school UX work look on mobile? School UX work. School UX work. 
Can you explain a little more about that, Dave? I'm not sure what you mean. Do you mean the, the, the um, portal changes? New UX. New UX. How will the new UX um, look on? Well, I know that we uh, we tested for mobile, so that's definitely been a consideration. The whole um, design process was really kind of leaning toward that mobile first sort of design. Um, so it should look good. I don't have any screenshots right now, unfortunately, um, but uh, I'm sure that they exist somewhere. <laughs> so we can probably track those down for you or you can attend one of the, um, developer meetings with the new UI uh, technical call that happens weekly, and they may, able to, may be able to share some additional um, insight on that. Yeah, dashboard on mobile has needed some work. Um, definitely make sure that if you run into any usability issues like that, that they're documented in JIRA, because that's going to be our source to go back and fix things. So if you do find something that needs improvement, please document it in JIRA so that we can um, you know, eventually get around to, to fixing it. Otherwise it you know, just kind of hangs out forever. So um, make us aware of those things by opening a new JIRA if it doesn't already exist. All right, any other questions? Do not see any, any other questions nope, coming in. I'm not seeing any new ones. All right. All right, well, thank you guys. Uh, oh, wait, there's one from. Vincent Young, a bit confused, so meeting is big blue button. The current contrib tool called meetings is the big blue button integration. The new contrib tool, or the new core tool that's gonna be meetings is, um, is gonna be a multi-tenant sort of thing. Um, not unlike plagiarism services where you can have more than one that you plug into it. Um, so the new version of meetings will support multiple different integrations as well as big blue button eventually. Um, so it, uh, but we did teams first because there was not a current teams integration. So we wanted to have that available for people who didn't already have it because the meetings tool could still be used as a contrib. Hopefully that clears that up. Any idea what's happening with bullhorns? Um, I think they're getting rolled into some of the notification work that's being done. I know there's been uh, some work done on the notification service, but I'm, I didn't see anything that was sort of user facing for uh, for 23 in the list of feature requests that were um, currently in the process. But 23 is still a little ways off and we're a long way from feature freeze. So if there's something for bullhorns that you want to lobby for, there's still a little bit of time All right. Great. Well, thank you guys for attending. I hope you picked up a few tips. And um, our next session is going to be our closing round of trivia. This is round two. So, um, so we'll be uh, doing our, our finalists that, that have the high scores as well. So hopefully you'll join us for trivia and um, wrap up our, our second day of SakaiCon. So um, thanks again. All right. Thanks all.